Hello, it's Molly with Design Loves Detail, and have you guys ever wondered what it means when someone says a paint color and then a percentage after? We're gonna talk about it, so stay tuned. All right, so this is a good example of a paint color that has been changed from the original formula. So it is, uh, this one is Sherwin-Williams and it's Shoji White at 75%. And I've had so many people asking about what that means because normally I pretty much use colors um, at their regular values, but there's sometimes when I wanna adjust the color a little bit and I will do it at 75% value or 50% value depending. Um, essentially what it means is that the paint mix formula that they use for that color, they're only gonna use 75% of that formula. And the rest is then used of the base color. And you wanna say like the base is white. It is, but not exactly like, it's not always like the truest white. So so technically it's just the 75% or the 50% of the paint mix with the base color. And sometimes that base, it's usually pretty neutral, but different paint companies have slightly different base colors. Um, you know, it could be white. Some of the whites have a little more gray in them, you know, so it's not like just pure white that gets added, but what it does do do is it brightens the color because the base color is gonna be more neutral than um, your paint color. So usually um, it was something like this. I liked Shoji White when I painted the sample, but I thought, ooh, I wanna make it just a little bit a little bit brighter. So I went to the 75%. If you wanted it to be even brighter, you'd go to 50% or really bright, then you'd go to 25%. I usually try to only do like the 75 or 50% just because eventually it just kind of gets where it's barely a color. If you're only using like 25% of the formula, you Usually it's a little too washed out for me. I love some saturation um, in neutral colors. I don't like them to be like too plain. So I always look for something that has usually a grayish undertone that helps it from looking yellow. And do remember, let's walk into this space. Do remember that paint colors change based on the lighting in the room, the direction it faces, a lot of different factors. So for sure, always, always, always do a sample. But a lot of times you can kind of, you know, kind of plan for some of the changes. Check it in different rooms. Um, like in this room, you can see it almost looks a little more more gray. So this is the exact same color as out there, but in here it just takes on a little bit more of a gray look because there's not as much natural light coming in from different directions. We just have the two windows and then also, you know, the curtains probably subdue the light a little bit too. So it's really, um, you can kind of see up there just a little bit more, it looks a little more saturated in here, a little bit more gray. Um, Cause that's kind of like with the shadows and stuff of the space that it looks a little different. Oh, and just a note, we are not adjusting like the filming settings at all. This is just straight off the camera so that it's not looking brighter or anything. Um, this is exactly like how it is, uh, or as close as we can get anyways, um, because there's, there's no changing to the camera settings. So we're gonna walk into another room that I'm gonna show you, same color again. Um, just, it does look a little bit different um, depending on the windows and stuff, like I was saying. So here in the office, definitely it looks a little bit more creamy in here because we have the, the warmth of the natural light. We have light coming from two different directions in here. And so it's gonna be just a little bit more creamy, bring in a little bit more of a yellow tone. But what's nice is that because I picked a color that didn't look too yellow, it really is okay. It doesn't get like where the color reads as yellow. It still looks like a nice neutral, just gonna be a little bit more creamy than like gray. So I, I really like this Shoji White. Um, another favorite, if you guys wanna go check out the, I have like a white paint color video um, in there that I, I talk about a bunch of different white colors. Another one that's really good with a grayish undertone is Benjamin Moore's China White, which, um, um, is it's like the dishes China like so it kind of has that um, like if you think of actual China it's kind of it's kind of got a little bit of a gray undertone too um, but that one has some good depth I use that in my house um, so that's another favorite to check out if you want something that's a neutral that still has a little bit of depth to it I don't like a bright white paint personally I'll sometimes use it on trim if I want some contrast um, super white by Benjamin Moore is usually what I use if I want a bright white but most often I'm gonna pick something with some warmth to it or some under tone, um, grazy undertone that gives us a little bit more depth to it, not so, so that it doesn't get washed out because definitely, especially when you have a lot of natural light, it can kind of wash out your paint colors. And also when you take pictures of spaces, they tend to, you know, usually you want to brighten them up a little bit and um, you don't want it to get too, too washed out, too white, too bright white feeling. Um, it can be a little bit sterile. So definitely um, I love the warmth of, of the Shoji white and then the 75% mixture was really good for me. So when you go to a paint store, you can literally just say that after you've done 
your sample and stuff. If you want a little lighter, just say, I want this color, Sherwin Williams showed you white at 75% value. And they will then use just 75% of that color mixture um, and then replace the other portion with the base color. So hopefully that clears that up. Let me know if that made sense. And if you guys have more questions um, on kind of what that all means. <laughs> and if you've used a color that you have kind of adjusted a little bit, um, would love to hear about it too. So obviously we just gave you a little bit of a peek at some of the rooms in the slip house, but if you miss the full tour, go check that out because it goes through the whole house. And then we've got individual space videos as well. Um, they really go into depth on these different rooms and how I put them together. And it's a great house. So we're sad to see it go, but um, thank you guys for following along on this journey. We've got our new builds um, stuff coming up soon too. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of future videos. Uh, give us a like and comment. We'd love to hear from you and I'll see you next time.